Hey guys, welcome back to the Race Survival Series. We had Royal actually just dismantle Queen in game number one, so possibly the best Zerg in the world. Already out of it, but such a star-studded lineup this week. Uh, all the games should be fantastic. We have Royal, of course, staying on here in the bottom right of Polypoid. In the top left, we have Snow. So Snow, of course, one of the best Protoss vs. Terran players of all time. Just so utterly strong in this matchup. His Reaver play, second to none. Uh, I mean, we can just expect that he is going to go Reaver, but what is he going to open up with to get there? Is it going to be some sort of Nexus first play? Is he just going to go Gateway expand? Possibly uh, just Dragoons into that later Robo. We'll see. And then over on Royal's side, you know, I mean, there's Factory expand and there's Gasless expand. That's pretty much it for Terran. Uh, you'll almost never see anything else because it all just dies to units. So <laughs> we'll see which one he wants to go for. I think it's more likely that he'll go for that factory expansion. Uh, it's a bit safer and gives a, a few more options, honestly. Uh, not as many economical options, but options for pressure, counter pressure, that type of thing. But as this SCV comes down, he shows us that, in fact, he's going for the gasless expansion. Uh, this barracks is placed here so that you can put a command center here and that's going to be a marine tight hole and then you can just throw a depot here and that makes a wall. So a zot that comes in has to walk all the way around the command center to attack anything. You can just run your marine up and, you know, it'll basically never get hit. So very economic opener, but even more economic is Nexus first. Okay, well, uh, you know, th this is... These two builds, like, are definitely not strangers to each other uh the nexus first is a little bit better uh some of it has to do with how quickly they scout each other and some of it has to do with like what opener the protoss wants to do because generally uh you'll go two gate with this but some people just go one gate and if you go one gate you're further ahead because you're not spending extra money on stuff you don't need like units now snow is going for a cross spawn scout which has become more popular and when he sees what this is, he's going to be able to react accordingly. And uh, that's going to be really good for him because Royal hasn't even began to scout. So he might, uh, it looks right now to me like he's going to have to blindly go for a bunker uh, for an anti-dragoon timing. So like around 3.15, he's probably going to have to start a bunker uh, because there's just no scouting going on. Yeah, so that's going to put Snow in slightly better spot right there. He can skip his Zaw altogether. Throw down that Cybernetic score, keep that pro production going. So yeah, I would say that Snow got the high, uh, upper end of, of this, uh, the the better deal, I guess. Yeah, see there it is. In fact, that's that's pretty darn quick. Um, but it's not the end of the world for Royal. Like economically, he's not really going to be far behind. Uh, he's just spending some extra on defenses, right? So his tech is going to be a little bit slower. His quality units a little bit slower. But you still do need the bunker anyways for when the dragons come because your tank is not... Like, look, there's no factory even started yet and the Cybernax core is almost done. But honestly, I don't think... It, I, we could see Snow go range and try to pressure it, but that's a very linear play that doesn't feel very Snow-like. I think it's much more likely that he throws down his Robo and wants to get in that Reaver right away. Right? There it is, what I tell you. All right, cross scout with the SCV. You can't see it, but you can feel it. I'm shaking my head right now. These guys, literally, it looks like two map hackers playing each other, man. Like, look at this. The bases that are closer, they just don't even scout them. They're like, nah, whatever. We're just, we'll just take a one in three shot, and a third of the time, our scout will be so late, we have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> Anyways... Uh, he sees that that is Nexus first. He knows what's up. SCV coming over to the side. What is this? Oh, maybe just like a sneaky way to get an SCV out. Academy on the way. Now, the thing about the Academy here is he's not going to scan the Robo likely. Uh, your first two scans are likely to go here and here. We'll keep an eye on that, but I just I want to throw that out there because... When you open up with the Academy, you kind of have to go anti-air with it. And we see he is getting a Robo, or uh, an Armory, rather. So he can get some Goliaths out. Mines are on the way right now. 
So it looks like that's going to be part of his anti-DT plan. As SCV gets pushed away. And a third Nexus very quickly as the SCV gets pushed out. So you can see the absolute utter greed that's occurring right now. Okay? Literally, this Nexus is started, and he has two units. He has two Dragoons. Two Dragoons, third Nexus, at like five minutes and ten seconds off of a Nexus first. <laughs> it's like absolutely crazy, but... Can Royal do anything about it? Because he doesn't have good intel. He saw the pylon up here. And he saw a probe up here. So that's pretty straightforward. You know that he's taking a third base. And if he's not, that is an elaborate mind game. Uh, now, a fair amount of vultures have come out. He only has a single siege shank. He's laying a lot of defensive mines. He might actually just take his own third command center. It is a real possibility. And we just... Okay, so the first scan. See, as I said, first scan here, second scan here. Uh, he sees this spinning, but I guarantee you he thinks that that's the range upgrade. He knows that something very greedy is occurring. And the Observer coming down. He should be seeing that blur momentarily. The Vultures go up, and they do check. They see that third Nexus. Oh, man. It's really, it's kind of funny to see a game like this, right? Because you actually will find games like this on the ladder where, like... What, some guy's being greedy and then the other guy's being greedy and then the other guy pushes it even further into greed and so what the other guy does is he pushes it further into greed he doesn't even have siege mode he's making a third neck a third command center on location before seven minutes that's it's like comical uh <laughs> and then snow of course what's the correct counterplay there you got to take another base yourself uh, but he is attacking in during this as well. Like I mentioned, Siege Mode was actually not done as he started this. So he actually did not have a very good uh, position defensively. And Snow just punished him pretty damn hard because of that. Like, look at this. That's a pretty big deal that he kills all the tanks. You have two add-ons, so he's going to have to produce tanks nonstop. But, like, it's going to take a while for Royal to get up to a number that allows him to stop to add more factories. That, that's like a hidden thing with Terran where uh, you want to get up to like seven to nine siege tanks so that you can stop making siege tanks because they're so expensive and then add a bunch of factories and get back into making siege tanks. So the fact that that has been pushed back is absolutely worth the Dragoons that Snow spent here. Now Snow looks ready to take a fourth base. He's getting his shuttle now. Where's that Reaver tech? There it is. There it is. You know he's going Reaver no matter what. But yeah, keeping a little bit of pressure on here. I mean, you're not going to find that much more damage, honestly. You might even end up losing a few units, but, uh, you know, you're keeping your opponent pretty honest here as Snow. So Dragoon's coming in from both sides. It's not really working, though. The spread is very good from Royal. Okay, well, I guess you'll just kill two more tanks here. And you can kind of see just how strong Snow is at this matchup. Like, I, I, <laughs> there's a lot of greediness and everything, too. Oh, mistargeting there a bit. Those dragons so, so low. Okay, yeah, he will end up picking those off. A shuttle is just sitting here now. Definitely need a missile turret here, I think. Ah, uh, Goliath's being made. Now, we have seen a few little changes for Royal. Like, look, he's getting plus one armor uh, after his plus one attack. But be, he's getting it instead of the Starport. He doesn't have the money to go into two plus two attack upgrades. There's just too many uh, little scuffles and battles going on right now. He's going to try very hard to keep this tank alive, and he will end up doing it. So all those Dragoons fall for a single Siege tank. Some Lost Mining time as well, of course. But it looks like we have just hit Stabilization. So Royal's okay. Snow's not going to do more damage like that. He has to change what he's doing. Looks like it's Reaver. Which, of course, we always know is going to occur. And honestly, after all that, uh, I guess the thing that is scariest for Royal is the lack of siege tanks. But the amount of Dragoons spent, he's not in any danger of dying. And then you look at the worker count. We have more SCVs than probes. That's amazing. Three bases against three bases. Amazing. But Snow is double expanding. Fourth base, fifth base. Right there and there. Uh, and that's something he's allowed to do because you just you don't have a big army and you don't have that many factories because you've had to build siege tanks nonstop this game. 
Now the speed shuttle starts to come in. There's like no anti-air. Oh no. He's going to have to start a wraith probably here. Get some goliaths out. This is bad news though. This is going to be a lot of damage. Yeah, look at that. The Reavers start to blow up SCDs left and right. Looking good for Snow right now. These are some very strong moves. He's already killed about 10 SCVs. Once again, the Reaver comes out. Going to stop that turret from finishing so he has a way out of here. And bam, there he goes. Oh, no. Tricked ya. Another Scarab. <laughs> it's like, oh, I see a Goliath I can kill. Yep, down it goes. All right, fly back over. There is that Wraith I was talking about. Generally, when something like this happens, you don't have any turrets up. You need to get the Wraith because you're just never going to get rid of it. More SCVs falling, man. Okay, finally it goes down. In fact, Snow probably planned that uh, for the mine drag. Because he has five base, so he doesn't care. If he's slowing down Royal at all, it's worth. Now, there's a 20 worker advantage, which means that the supply advantage army-wise is not that big for Snow. Okay, it does get that shuttle with the Wraith. That's nice. But I really like Snow's position here. Even though he doesn't have, like, the greatest army in the world right now, that can change. He's getting ready to take another main. 73 probes spread on five bases is going to give you insane income. So he is going to be able to max out and stay there and also continue to tech up. In fact, you see he's getting scarab damage because he's snow, and why not? Templar Archives is on the way as well to go with those speed shuttles, a great pairing. And Royal's just trying to, you know, stop water from coming on board or something like that. Now, it, it looks like he's going to stabilize, right? He's got 60 SCVs. That's enough for three bases for now. Uh, and he's at 130 army supply. So he's like, he basically can hold any attacks. Build a couple more turrets, lay a few more mines, spread your tanks a little bit. You're, you're not going to die. But where do you go from there? And, well, the answer should be another command center because there is absolutely no attacking potential this game. Not for a long time, at least, from Royal. Snow would have to give him two armies, I think, for Royal to be able to attack. Uh, and, yeah, with the High Templars coming out, it becomes worse and worse of an idea. Look at this. He does not even care about the Wraith. Just coming in with that Speed Shuttle Zealot Bomb. Some mines kind of in the way here. And with Snow taking this main... Look at this. He's adding a bunch of gates. He's throwing down a ton of cannons. This is getting really scary. That is your sixth base location. Snow is going to get into the position where he can actually start attacking quite a bit as well. Oh, nice save there on the siege tank. Good on siege. All right, a lot of zealots kind of flowing out. This is this is not the greatest uh, building placement I've ever seen. It seems like that could be a slight problem. Dragoons bumping into each other right there. A lot of vultures kind of flowing out of the base. He is getting 2-2 two, two upgrades right now. Oh, that shuttle just barely making it out alive. And, yeah, I mean, Royal's army is, is good. This is, this is like a very good army supply. If you're at 140 army supply, uh, that's where you kind of just hold on, like I was mentioning before. But I don't think he can attack. Uh, I guess... Until Psystorm is out, he has some potential. Psystorm is where it really screws you up. Oh, God. Ooh, nice little mind drag there, or attempt at least. Does get a hit off. Blows up that Reaver as well. A bunch of the Dragoons being splattered and pushed back. Looks like Royal right now starting that fourth command center. You know, still reasonably timely. I gotta say, I hope this game for Royal, we see him actually expand to the north here. I think there's... Well... I, it doesn't feel to me like there is a lot of potential for him pushing this way because you're never going to be able to push up this ramp and kill this base. It just... That is... These types of locations are so difficult because they have the constant reinforcements and you're going up a tiny ramp and there's cannons and he'll make high templars there. So I think pushing in this direction 
is a losing prospect because you'll never gain this. And when all your focus is here, Snow takes the top right. So I think this game, if Royal is to take this, he needs to expand towards top right. He needs to push towards top right. Like just, yeah, deep a wall, turrets, mines, everything here. Just secure this base because you need it. Secure this area and you're pretty good to go north. Now, here we go. Comes in a big dive bomb. Oh, some side storms coming out. Doesn't hit this huge clump. Luckily, Zealot's getting mostly cleared. Oh, there it is. There's the side storms. Absolutely brutal. Siege shanks getting shredded here. Dragoons, though, all that's left over will be pushed back. A lot of mines in this top right location. Definitely wants to make sure Snow can't just run over there with a probe and make everything he wants. All right, a drop of a eh, couple siege tanks in a in a drop ship. We'll see what that's all about. All right. Well, I mean, I mean, he's being really efficient with these. Tries to come over this drop like. This, in theory, against a new base is good, but when you have all these gateways and units, obviously it doesn't do anything. So, um, yeah, dropship play is not going to solve the problems of the bottom left. Honestly, I look at this game, and the bottom left, to me, I, is so unbreakable that you have to ignore it and move to the north. You just have to accept that Snow gets half the map, and you have to try to get the other half yourself. That's really what the game has turned into. Snow is too active on the map right now. Look at this. He's got so many speed shuttles. He's got that size storm ready. He's getting Kadarin Amulet, Observer Speed, really everything of his dreams. And, you know, he's he's ready to bash you if you try to actually push him. Speed shuttles coming down. One of them actually empty right now. Kind of funny. He definitely could do a drop here. Like, two turrets and two tanks doesn't do anything against these speed shuttles. Yeah, and it looks like that is going to be it. And, well, that's going to be a lot of dead SCDs. Zealots doing their job. No anti-air there, so uh, he can actually get the, uh, the command center out. And he's going to kill these depots, so he'll be able to get out with a bunch of these units as well. But uh, realistically, you definitely do want to go up and try to clean that. Okay, I... I'm not sure, but I think we may have just seen him drop a Siege Shank to kill a High Templar there. I'm not... I, I mean, that's like a StarCraft 2 move where you boost a medevac and drop ghosts out to EMP High Templars. Like, I don't know if he did that, but that is within the realm of craziness that Royal operates in. So that's super cool if he did. Okay, Royal right now starting to push out. This is not something that looks like it has any chance of working. In fact, a very sloppy attack. Snow taking the bottom fight very well. The top fight going to Royal, though. But you can see that bank. Look at this. 2.5k and 700 gas. Uh, and even though Royal is like... He's killing a lot of units here. It's just... It's so hard for him to get anywhere really mining at this point. Right, it looks like Royal. I think Royal is like, yeah, he, he's trying to push. He feels like he needs to do something, but I think honestly he's pretty dead at this point, and he knows it. Look at this. He tries to go over here. That's it. GG. Snow wins one for Protoss.